Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Group Theater's production of A Winter's Carol, sponsored by our friends and Beth Mackey's Laundry Services, specialists in the out, out, darn spot cleaning process. Thank you for joining us, and happy holidays. Marley was dead to begin with. There's no doubt whatever about that. Scrooge and Marley were partners for more years than any could recall, and when Jacob Marley died, Ebenezer Scrooge inherited it all. Rich as creases was Scrooge, and just as tight-fisted, too. Scrooge was a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Seven years had passed, and now, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house, a grim, cheerless place if ever there was one. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who sat in a cold and dismal little cell beyond, working as hard, harder than updating the ledgers. Bob Cratchit? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Now you get that letter from Higgins and Blackthorn, Cratchit, then I want you to finish posting this ledger. And after that, you can walk over to Pathergill's and tell Ephraim Pathergill you've come after the 17 shillings and sixpence he's always in speckle mess. And tell him I shall have a constable over there if he doesn't pay up at once. Mr. Pathergill's wife has been ill, sir. Oh, what do I care about his wife? I want my 17 and 6. I, I just thought it mean Christmas and all, sir. Christmas? Christmas? You mentioned to me that that word to me once more about Cratchit and how? A Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, Mr. Fed. God save you, Uncle. Bah! Humbug! Christmas of Humbug, Uncle? Now, nah, I'm sure you don't mean that. I mean just that! Exactly that! Merry Christmas? Why do I even have to be merry? What reason have you? You're poor enough. Well, what right have you to be dismissal about Christmas, Uncle? You're rich enough? Bah! Now, Uncle, don't be cross. Well, what else can I be when I live in a world of such fools? What's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills without money? Merry Christmas! A time for finding yourself a year older, not an hour richer. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes around with a Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own pudding and buried with the snake of hollow through his heart he should. Uncle! Now, nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, but you don't keep it, Uncle. Well, leave me alone then! What do you want? A Christmas gift, no doubt. I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas? Much good may Christmas do you. <laughs> Much good it ever has done you. There are many things from which I derive good by, which I have not profited materially. I dare say, Uncle, Christmas among the rest, but I have always thought of Christmas time as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And therefore, Uncle, though I have never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good, and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. God bless it, sir. Let me hear another shout out of you there, Bob Cratchit, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your job. And as for you, nephew, I wonder you don't go into Parliament. You talk enough nonsense. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. I was nothing from you. I asked nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I tried. A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year, too. Bah! Hope on. And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob, and Mrs., and to Tiny Tim. Oh, thank you. Same to you, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, Bob. Nonsense. It's what I'm talking of Christmas and not two sixpences to jingle together in his trousers pocket. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. This is the firm of Scrooge and Marley. Yes, sir. We should like to see the head of the firm, if we may. Oh, very good, sir. What is it? Gentlemen to see you, Mr. Scrooge. Do I know you, sirs? We have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge and Mr. Marley. Marley's been dead seven years tonight. I am Scrooge. Well, now, Mr. Scrooge, at this season of the year, it's only fitting that we, who are more fortunate, should raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. You may not believe it, sir, but many thousands are not now in want of common necessities. And hundreds of thousands are in want of simple comforts. Are there no prisons? Well, there are plenty of prisons, sir. And the workhouses, they're still in operation, I trust. We wish we could say they are 
are not. But they are, sir. The treadmill and the portal are in full vigor, then. Both very busy, sir. Ah! I'm glad to hear that. I was afraid from what you said that something had happened to them to stop them in their useful course. No, sir. All of these institutions that you mentioned are flourishing, nevertheless. There is great need that some additional provision for the poor and the destitute be made. Bah! A few of us, those blessed by prosperity, have taken it upon ourselves to raise a fund to offset the cold challenges of this time of year. What shall I put you down for? Nothing! Oh, we see. We wish to remain anonymous, sir? I wish to be left alone! I don't make myself merry at Christmas time, and I can't afford to make a lot of idle people merry. I help support the, I help to support the establishments that take care of the poor. They cost enough. Let those who are badly off go there. Many can't go there, sir, and many would rather die. Then my advice to them is to do so, and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I've only heard word that this is so. It's the truth, Mr. Scrooge. Well, so be it then. It's none of my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, sir. We quite understand, Mr. Scrooge. Good afternoon. Cratchit, show these gentlemen out. Yes, sir. This way, sir, please. Sir, I cut it out in no house. I would like to come to you for Yes, sir. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. There are others in worse situations than I. You're a generous fellow. I wish I might say so of your employer. Gretchen! Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Gretchen! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yes, sir. Good Lord! Yes, sir. 2431 1K3, a new scarlet ticket for Tiny Tim, a comb for Martha. 33, 3, and carry 3. A hair ribbon for Belinda. 4, 7, 12, 15. Cratchit? Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's too late for you to have to go to Patrick Hill's. He'll be closed up for Christmas like these other fools. We may as well close up shop now. Yes, sir. It is getting a little dark outside. Hard to see the figures. I, I suppose you want the entire day tomorrow? If it's quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair either. But I suppose I can't do anything about it. If I was to stop half a crown for your wages, you'd think very ill-used, I'll be bound. Oh, sir, I... Yeah, but you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. Once a year? Once a year, indeed! A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose there's no good talking. You must have the whole day. We'll see that you're here the earlier the next morning, you understand? I will, sir. I will, indeed. Good night, sir, and Merry Christmas. Bah! Merry Christmas. Bah! We will return with Act 2 after news from our weather watch. Today's highs will be in the mid-30s with lows just around freezing, and the chance of snow at a hearty 92%, making it likely that there will be plenty of snow for Santa's sleigh. And as we know, all know though, it takes more than snow to keep things running smoothly for Santa, it also takes belief and love. Do you think that the spirits will manage to find either of those essentials in Ebenezer Scrooge? We return to Act Two of our play. The office was closed in a twinkle, and Bob Cratchit, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, for he boasted no great coat, went down a slide on Cornhill twenty times in honor of it being Christmas Eve, and then hastened home to his family in Camden Town. Scrooge, on the other hand, took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, having read all the newspapers and spent the rest of his evening with his banker's book, went to his dismal house. Darkness is cheap, and Scrooge liked it. The yard was so dark that even Scrooge, who knew its every stone, had to grope with his hands through the fog and the frost to find the door. Scrooge walked through his rooms to see that all was right. Sitting room? Bedroom. Lumber room. All as they should be. Nobody under the table. Nobody under the sofa. Nobody under the bed. Nobody in the closet. Close the door. He locked himself in. He double-locked himself in and took off his cravat 
put on his dressing gown and slippers and his nightcap, and sat down by the fire to take his gruel. Thank you. 
you will be haunted by three spirits. Oh, I'm afraid, Jacob. Is this the only chance and hope, Jacob? It is your only chance and hope. Um, no, I think I'd rather not. <laughs> Expect them tomorrow when the bell tolls one. And Ebenezer, look back for your own sake. You remember what we've said. Jacob, wait! Oh, fire! Oh, Scrooge awoke. He was lying on his bed, fully dressed. Suddenly, the curtains of his bed were drawn aside, and Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them. As close to it as I am now to you, and I am standing in the spirit at your elbow and your ear, old Scrooge gazed upon three strange figures standing at the foot of his bed. Shinks Kalawe? Buenas noches. Good evening. Who, who is that? Who, who are you? Please come with us. Pero como ha crecido. My, he has grown. E, yes. Oh, come on. We have work to do. Ebenezer Scrooge, we have come for you. You? Are you the spirits Jacob told me of? E, si. We are. Who? Or, well, what are you? Community, celebration. We are the spirits of community, celebration, and change. Don't you remember me, Icas Lacas? They called him Pequeño Ratón. Really? E, yes. Little Mouse! Grandma used to call me that. E, speak Asian? Icas Lacas? No, no, I don't speak. I don't understand. I don't know. What do you want of me? What brings you here to hold me? Your welfare, Little Mouse. Now rise. Don't be scared. Can he even get up? Come with us. Oh, no, no, no! Not out the window! Why? I can't do that! I'll fall down! Hurry up, little mouse. Hurry. You need only reach out. Where are we? What's become of the city? And there's snow on the ground. Where are we? Salila. Oh, how beautiful it was. These are the shadows of the things that have been. Do you recognize this countryside? Sure he does. This is our home. Marred by the things of the crazy people. Pretty trees, river, <coughs> mountains. But very ugly buildings. Something evil there about them. This is Salilo before the dam was built. You know every inch of this place, every rock, the winding of the river, every tree. And flying further, you see that bleak building over there? It's the boarding school. It looks like a prison. Worse than a prison. It is the boarding school we were all taken to. I was a boy there. They took me from my family, they cut my hair, burned the clothing that my grandmother had made for me. They punished us when we spoke the language of our ancestors. Yes, I went to school in that horrible place. Do you recollect the path? I can walk it blindfold. Strange you should have forgotten it so many years. Not so strange. There was nothing good from that place, nothing worth remembering, and many things I work hard to forget. Come, let us go closer. Look through the window into that cold, barren room. What do you see? I see a boy. He's alone, so wrong, and that Christmas. Solitary child, neglected and alone. Yes, yes, I see. I know that boy. Oh, I was so lonely. I missed my family, especially Carla. She missed you too. His Carla, his abuela? Yes, Ebenezer, especially your maternal grandmother. Your lip is trembling, Scrooge, and what is that on your cheek? It's nothing! Nothing at all! I, I wish I... Oh, but it's too late now. Meshnawa? Are you okay? Nothing, nothing's wrong. The, the waves came to my door singing Christmas carols last night, and there was a boy like that among them. A pale, thin little boy with a ragged coat. I should have liked to have given him something, that's all. Is that all? Come, Ebenezer Scrooge, let us see another Christmas. Do you know this place, Ebenezer Scrooge? Oh, know it! Know it! This is the accounting house where I was apprenticed! Oh, look, it's my old supervisor! Bless his heart, old present way, alive again! And hosting one of his Christmas parties! Come on, everybody, let's dance! Pick your partners! Listen to him! Is this it? Red the needle! Big bonus, come on! Guns, now back to your places! <laughs> oh, and look, there's Nick Wilkins! Poor
them younger than any of them. And the tables, all loaded with roasts and mash, mince pie and ale. Oh, what a jolly time we used to have. That carefree young man over there, the one with the light heart and the gay smile, do you recognize him? I sure don't. It's Ebenezer. Oh, he? Yes, yes, merciful heaven. I was so happy then. A needless frivolity, would you say? The cost of making those silly folks so full of joy. A foolish, needless expense. Those wonderful parties of frivolity? A foolish and needless expense? Well, isn't it? What does he gain from this investment? Why praise him for a lack of thrift? Well, at least did not set him back very much. Only a few pounds of your lower money. Spirit, you must understand. It's not about the expense. It's about showing appreciation for hard work. A person in such authority as old Fezziwig has the power to make his staff happy or unhappy, to make the working day light or heavy. His power lies in words and in looks and in things so tiny that it's impossible to count him up. The happiness he gives, even at this modest expense, is quite as great as if... ¿Qué pasa, Oh, nothing, nothing at all, spirits. Something, I think? No, no! Tell us. Well, only, it's just that I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Patrick, that's all. Our time in the past grows short, and we have yet another journey to make. Oh, where are you taking me now? This is our last visit to the past, Ebenezer. Here, in this little room, with a fair young girl by your side. Do you recognize yourself, Ebenezer? No, 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 please spare me this. You're older now, a man in the prime of life. Your face has begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. Your eyes are greedy, the eager, restless eyes of a miser. No, no, please. She knows it too, that girl by your side. There are tears in her eyes, Buena. She is beautiful. Look upon her, Ebenezer. Too good for him. He broke her heart. It matters little to you. Very little. I know that now. No. Have I changed for you? When we were engaged, we were both poor. Was it better then? Better to be poor? Better at least to be happy. You changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser. Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words, no, never. In what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight, so I release you from your promise. Oh. At first it may cause you pain to lose me, a very brief pain, but soon it will be dim, like a half-remembered dream, an unprofitable dream, and you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. May you be happy in the life you have chosen, Ebenezer. That's enough. Show me no more. Take me home. These are the shadows of things that have been. Things that they are what they are. Do not blame me. Ebenezer, one more shadow. Come. No, no more. No more. What did he say? What does it matter? This is not working. What the las pilas? Yes, 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 I hear you. Ebenezer, see again. Who is it? Oh, it's Bella. She hasn't changed. Well, of course she hasn't. She's that one vampire, right? You mean Bella? Different story. You're right, though. She must have. She hasn't aged a day. Well, shall we say that the years have are mild to those who are kind? Belle never married, but instead of becoming bitter, she turned to good works and caring for those who cannot care for themselves. She was a good listener, an able nurse. Spirit, let me go. Show me no more. Listen now while they speak, Ebenezer. Good word, Belle. That child in two be war is on the mend. I didn't think there was any hope. You are a miracle worker. Oh, and Belle, I think I saw one of your old friends today working the night shift. Who was it, Doctor? Yes. How can I? It. Oh, oh, of course, Ebenezer Scrooge. How is he? I really don't know. I passed along this window just now. It wasn't shuttered or anything. And there was a candle inside, so I couldn't help but see him. His partner, Jacob Marley, is rumored to be at the point of death, and yet there, Scrooge said, quite alone in the world, I think balancing his books and stocks and back in the day's profits or whatever. Oh, Ebenezer, Ebenezer. Bell! Forgive me, Bell! Spirit, I can't bear anymore! Leave me! Help me no more! Take me back! Take me back!
of a winter's carol adapted from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Now, a word from our friends at Beth Mackey Laundering Service. Are you tired of wringing your hands about ring around the collar? Have you searched in vain for a cleansing product that really works to get out stubborn stains? Well, search no more. Beth Mackey's Laundry Service is here to help. With their expert team and patented out out darn spot process, Beth Mackey Laundry Services will have your favorite shirts, dresses, and lawsuits looking their best in no time. Beth Mackey, for all your laundering and cleaning needs. And now, back to Act 3 of The Winter's Girl. On the stroke of one, Scrooge awakened suddenly and sat bolt upright in his own bed. He remembered the words of Marley's ghost and wondered from which direction the specters would again appear. At that moment, nothing between a baby and a rhinoceros would have astonished him very much. Now, being prepared for almost anything, he was not by any means prepared for nothing. And consequently, when no shape appeared, he was taken with a violent fit of trembling. Five minutes. Ten minutes. A quarter of an hour went by, yet nothing came. Then, as he sat in his bed, he became aware gradually of a great blaze of ruddy light, which seemed to shine upon him from the adjoining room. He got up softly and shuffled in his slippers to the door. It was his own sitting room, no doubt about that, but it had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceiling were so hung with living green that it looked like a perfect grove, from every part of which bright, gleaming berries glistened. There was a mighty blaze roaring in the hearth, and a resplendent feasting table was laden with turkeys, venison, tamales, pies, salmon, red-hot chestnuts, something apparently called a tofurkey, and seething <laughs> bowls of hot chocolate. The room was warm and welcoming, flooded with the aroma of sweet grass, sage, and cedar. There they were, the three spirits of community, celebration, and change, glamorous and festive, sustainable faux fur and comfort. Come in, come in, Ebenezer Scrooge. What is all this? It's Christmas, Ebenezer. Look upon us. You've never seen the like of this before. You. You all seem a bit different now. You're tall, almost a giant, and those glowing orbs you're carrying. He's not very swift on uptake, is he? No. It's light from the Creator, flowing into the homes of us all, even you, Pequeño Ratón. Spirits, take me where you will. Last time I went against my will, and I learned a lesson which is working now. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Reach out to us, Ebenezer. Reach, Ikas Latas. Creo que es demasiado viejo y rígido. We need to go further to reach him instead. Where have you brought me, spirit? Humble dwellings, humble streets. Humble street? Believe it. No, not humble. Humble. Very humble indeed. Yet there is happiness here. Who, who are these people? Who's that woman? And those children? Merry Christmas, Father and Tim. Merry Christmas, Mom. 
Oh, Tim, you darling. Oh, Father, I'm so glad to be home. And we're so glad to have you, Martha. And how are you going to be in church today, Father? Oh, that's good as well, you better. Jacob Marley, and lifting up his eyes, beheld. 
beheld the spirits for a third time, no longer merry in their holly, but dressed in the shadows of the night, silent and cold. I said, and lifting up his eyes, beheld the spirits for a third time, no longer merry in their holly, but dressed in the shadows of the night, silent and cold. Sorry, sorry. We, yes, we didn't think we were needed. What do you mean, didn't think you were needed? Of course you're needed. You are the ones that finally scare Ebenezer into rethinking his life. We know, yes, but also this part gets very scary in places, and kind of intense. Small children, for example, should probably leave. I see. Well... Be that as it may, we need the show to go on. And we really do need all three of you. So, if you don't mind, thank you. Many thanks to you all. As I was saying, these three solemn phantoms, shrouded in black, draped and hooded, moved towards Scrooge, slowly and silently, like a mist drifting across the ground. Spirits, you have come to show me of Christmas yet to come. To reveal the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Answer me, spirits! No answer but the inevitable. I fear this journey more than any other. Yet, I know your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, lead on! Lead on! Through the dank alleyways and narrow passages of desperation, destitution, the spirits led Scrooge, until they arrived at a tiny brokerage shop in a forgotten cul-de-sac, dimly lit by a dustbin fire that gave little light and less warmth. Where are you taking me now? I do not know this place, nor wish to. Honestly, spirits, what is there for me to learn here? Wait, that woman, she's my housekeeper. <laughs> and I'm Jack. Begging your pardon, Sadie, but I took these off of him before they shook the casket. His nephew did not want them, and they're no earthly use to anyone buried in the ground. J.M., the Mormon. Cuff Cuffings are a little specific. Might be difficult to move, but the diamonds are real. I grant you. You say he's belong to him, then? Oh, no! That was inherited from his papa! Might be sure he'd wear it on. He would have called it thrifty, I reckon. Dear God, it's so warm. He didn't have nothing catching, did he? Well, I would have stuck around keeping him company until the doctor came if he had one eye. Nah, just have it coming and what use have he for these things now? Not like everything you know to keep him warm where he's going. <laughs> Desecration! Never have I seen such disrespect. What kind of a man was he to be treated this way? Had he no friends? The spirits became a thick fog of mist, and as it cleared, Scrooge found himself at the Commerce Exchange. Why? It, it's the exchange! I was here every day since the start of my apprenticeship with Fezziwick, even on Sundays. Look! There! I know those men! We have made a lot of money together over the years. Oh no, I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. Well, when did he die and what of? Was it burglary gone wrong? Was he murdered? Was it gruesome? Was there a lot of blood? Hey, sorry to have to disappoint you. Reportedly, he died last night, presumably of natural causes. Though honestly, I never thought I'd live to see it, not with his mean ways. Indeed, and what's more, it's likely to be a very cheap funeral. <laughs> For upon my life, I don't know anybody planning to go to it. Here then, suppose we make up a party of our own and volunteer as mourners. Really, sounds a bore. Well, I don't mind going if the lunch on and upon an open bar is provided. And oh yes, and why not? After all, we were his very best friends. Said what? Don't you remember? We used to nod to him, and he always nodded in return wherever we crossed paths in the street. Best friends indeed. I know those men's spirits. Good gentlemen of business. Now I see them as vile, self-serving pariahs. If I were there now, I'd take them to task. Oh, 
that. Not that I'm not their spirits. Their spirits? Who was this man that died? This unloved, unlamented creature? Is there no one at all to mourn him? No one to bear him to this graveside? Was this man so unworthy, or was all the world so heartless? Can you show me no expression of tenderness and grief? Scrooge was carried upwards into a storm. Thunder crashed, lightning broke the sky, the clouds wept as Scrooge was dropped again in a shabby but well-kept residential neighborhood. Spirits, is this not Bob Cratchit's home? But it's not the same. What are we doing here? Why? Why is it so quiet? So very quiet here. Mother, mother, please. Oh, my son, my little son, Tiny Tim, I love him so. Mama, por favor, you must not. It's almost time for Father to be home. You must not let him see you with red eyes and tears. Yes, yes, of course. Father's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to, and yet I've known him to walk very fast and deal with Tiny Tim on his shoulders. So have I. But he would like to carry, and his father loved him so that it was no trouble. Bob? Buenas noches, mi cielo. Buenas noches, Martha. You're late, Bob. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I, I went to the churchyard today just to sit with Tim for a bit. I wish he could have gone with me. It would have done your heart some good to see how sweet and pleasant the place it is. Oh, me home. I should have been a better father. Maybe he'd still be here if I was. That the light of such a bright soul should be gone from this world. It is though as darkness of their sorrow surrounds me, making all the world bleak. What now, though? Is it actual darkness that surrounds me? Spirit, where are we now? Merciful heaven, a churchyard, overrun by grass and weeds, a place so desolate, lonely, crumbling gravestones. The spirits guided Scrooge to a fresh gravesite. So poor was Scrooge's eyesight that he knew he must draw closer to see the name engraved on the newly placed headstone. But cold fear seized him. He found himself unable to move closer. Spirits, before I draw nearer to that gravestone, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of things that will be, or, or are they the shadows of things that may be only? Will, will you not speak to me, spirits? What is that grave to which you point? Without a word, the spirits threw Scrooge to the ground before the stone. Ah, now I see it. Uh huh. That, there's writing on that stone. The name on that gray stone is Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge! Oh, no, no, spirit. No, no, hear me. I'm not the man I was. Why show me this if I'm all past hope? Tell me, tell me that I can change these dreadful shadows you've shown me by an altered life. I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll try to keep it all here. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future. I'll not shut out these lessons that they teach. Tell me, Spirit. Oh, come on, tell me. Tell me that I can sponge away the writing on that stone. Spirit, I beg you, Spirit, I beg you. Spirit, I promise. I promise on my knees. I promise. I promise. On... What's this? It's my own dream. Oh, I'm home. In my own bed, in my own room. And the sun, the sun shining, it's clear. It's bright, there's no fog. What a beautiful day. Oh, glorious, glorious. Hey, hey there, you, yes. Hello? Yes, you there, I'm speaking to you. What day is it? What's that, sir? What day is it, my fine fellow? Today, why, it's Christmas Day. Ha <laughs> ha, ah, Christmas Day, then I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. All in one night. Heaven be praised. Um, how's that, sir? Oh, yes, back to you. Listen, my lad, uh, do you know where the poulterer is in the next street? I should say I do. What is it to you? Ha, intelligent, inquisitive young man. Quite remarkable. Tell me, do you know if they sold the price turkey that was showcased on the window? What? The one as big as me? <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, I think it's still there, sir. That's wonderful. Tell them to send it to Bob Cratchit and his family on Broad Street, and mind you, they're not to know who paid for it. Go on, hurry, hurry, my lad. Oh, oh, wait, wait, here, wait a minute. Here's half a crown for your eternal trouble. Half a crown? 
crown? Yes, sir, right away, sir, and a Merry Christmas, sir. Ha-ha, and a Merry Christmas to you. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. Merry Christmas! A Merry Christmas to everybody, and a Happy New Year around the world. Woo! Woo! Scrooge threw on his best if perhaps a bit out of fashion and slightly moth-eaten suit. On his way to what was destined to be a very festive Christmas at the household of his nephew, Scrooge ran into the gentleman from the Benevolent Society. Oh, my dear friends, how do you do? Are you addressing us, sir? Well, yes, aren't you the gentleman who came to my office in regards to that chariot? Why, yes, sir. Ah, a Merry Christmas to you. Er, uh, yes, and to you, sir. Uh, allow me to ask your pardon, sir. And will you have the goodness to accept? I prefer to whisper this. What? But Lord, bless me, my dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? <gasps> no. Truly, if you please. Not a far from less. <laughs> a great many of backpackers are included in it, I assure you. Will you do me that favor? Well, my dear sir, we don't know what to say. Now, don't say anything, please. Come and see me. Will you? You will come and see me, right? We will. We will indeed. Ha <laughs> ha, thank you. I'm very much obliged to you. I thank you 50 times. Bless you and Merry Christmas. Scrooge made his way to his nephew's house where he was welcomed with a little shock and a greater share of joy. The Cratchits also had the best and most filling of Christmases with, so to speak, all the trimmings. On Boxing Day, Scrooge awoke early, unable to contain his excitement about the events ahead. A second Christmas day. Scrooge was early at his office. He went early for a reason. If only he could be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late. That was the thing he had his heart set upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No Bob. A quarter past. No Bob. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come in. At last he came. Quietly, if swiftly, a beleaguered Bob slid into his chair behind his desk, diving immediately into the thick of accounts and calculations. 15 and 21, 6 and carry the 1, 24 and carry the 2, 31 and 89. Hello, you Cratchit! Yes, sir. Step this way, Cratchit, if you please. Cratchit, what do you mean by coming in at this time of day? Why, well, I am very sorry, sir. I am behind about time today. Indeed? Mr. Scrooge, sir, it is just what we were making very merry yesterday, oh, and sir. Well, I'll tell you what, my friend. I shall not stand for this sort of thing. Coming in at, like this at Christmas time, I tell you, you've left me no choice but, Cratchit, no choice but to raise your salary. Please, sir, I'll never be late again. I, excuse me, sir, a raid, Mr. Scrooge, sir. Yes, yes, Bob, a raise. And one long overdue. A Merry Christmas to you, Bob. Merry Christmas, my good fellow. A Merry Christmas that I've given to you in many a year. I shall raise your salary. And we'll see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family, huh? We'll discuss it this very afternoon. Come on, Bob. Make up the fire. Make it up before you add another sum, Bob Cratchit. And so it was. Scrooge was better than his word. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. He did it all, and infinitely more, to Tiny Tim who did not die. He was a second father. He became as good a friend and as good a person as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh, and little heeded them. His own heart laughed. That was quite enough for him. May that truly be said of us, of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone.
You guys are also welcome to come up here and get some chocolates and food and stuff.